Hey everyone, welcome to WitCode, where in this video, we're going to be talking about how to create dynamic HTML pages by using Express template engines. So we're going to learn about templates, template engines, and specifically using them with Express. So before we begin though, um, what is a template engine? Well, template engines allow us to use template files with dynamic content. For example, we could have an HTML file that represents a user's profile page. The structure of this HTML page will be the same for each user, but certain displayed information will be different, such as the username, profile picture, and things like that. So we could see how the structure of this HTML page would be the same for each user, but it'll have dynamic content. Now let's talk about some popular templating engines for Express. So some popular options for Express are Pug, EJS, and Mustache. For this tutorial, we're going to be using Pug. And so what is Pug? Well, Pug is a powerful template engine for Express that has a variety of features. And we can install Pug the same way we installed Express, which is simply using the Node Package Manager. So npm install Pug. And so now as Pug is being installed, um, or now we've installed Pug, but we haven't actually set it as our template engine. To do this, we have to use the method set with our Express application. So what we do, let's do it up here. We call app.set we supply it the key view engine and then we pass in our, our template engine which will be pug. So note that to use pug that we just installed which will be in our package.json file here version 3.0.2 to use it with express we don't actually have to require it we just pass in the string pug. And so now real quick what is this app.set method? The express app method set is used to store variables. It is often used along with the method get, which retrieves the stored variables. So for example, we could store variables in our Express app by doing like fave channel and then passing wit code. And then we could later retrieve this by calling app.get, then passing in fave channel. And what this would return would be the string wit code that we placed there. However, certain names in the set in the, this set method are reserved for configuration. For example, the key view engine that we used here is reserved for setting the Express application's view engine. So Pug, our view engine, will be responsible for making these dynamic templates. But what we have to do now is we have to use another reserved keyword, so app.set, and this keyword is, keep pressing the wrong button, is views. And then what this is, is it tells us, tells Express where our templates are. And we're going to place them inside a folder called views. So we're going to do, actually what we're going to do is underscore dir name. Sorry, what we want to do is require a module called path, I'm all over the place right now, called path, which will allow us to use um, uh, methods to essentially determine the path to a folder, to a file, and what we're going to use is double underscore dir name, and we're going to use our path module to join dir name with a folder called views. So essentially dir name prints the current, prints the working directory of um, where this node application is, and then join will join on views. So this will essentially create a string where it'll be um, getting to our application and then dash views. And let's create this views folder now, which will hold our templates. So we'll call it views. And now let's create our first, um, our first template, which will be our first um, pug file. So inside views, let's create a, full, a file called profile.pug. And the pug extension is what makes this a pug file essentially. And then we're going to place the following inside. We're going to set the document type to be HTML because it's an HTML document. I'm not going to be going over a lot about how Pug works in this tutorial, but essentially you might be able to see from here. What it does is it nests HTML elements by indentations. So you have to indent. So this will create HTML element. This will create a head HTML element. And then we're going to have a title, which will be user profile, and then we're going to have the HTML body, 
and in this it's just going to be an h1 that says my profile. So this here, what this pug will, will eventually render into, let me get it from a different page, this pug text will render into this HTML. So we can see we have doc type HTML here, we have HTML here, and within HTML is nested head and body, and within head we have title, and within body we have h1, that says my profile. But now what we want to do is we want to display our template. And to do this, let's go into our users route here, and let's actually just get rid of this, and let's just change this to dash username again. And in dash username, what we're going to do is we're going to call response.render, and then we're going to pass in profile. And so real quick, what is this render method here? Well, this method response.render is used to compile our template. So the first parameter is the view we want to display, which is here is our profile.pug file that we made right here. And note also how we just have to provide the word profile because we've established our view engine as pug. So here we establish the view engine as pug. And we also just write profile here like this without views because we specified the location of our templates to be in this views folder. So essentially, let me get rid of this. Essentially what this is saying is dash views dash profile dot pug. But because of everything that we have here, we, we are allowed to neglect or just leave out all that information. And now let's run our application and let's navigate over to a username and see what it looks like. So we're gonna run nodemon index.js, and then within here, I believe we are on localhost 1234, and then dash, let's just do dash wit code, cannot get dash wit code, what did we lose here? Oh yeah, so what we, if you remember, this is being exported, can't open this, this is being exported as a router object with router level middleware, which is tagging on dash users. So we need to not call dash wit code, but dash users dash wit code. And we get my profile, which of course is our pug profile or our pug file that is being rendered and then sent to our browser. But anyhow, let's go back in here. And so this is where we're rendering it. And now one of the cool things about templates is we can provide, well, because they're dynamic, we provide them data. So to provide data to our template, what we do is this render method takes a second parameter and it's an object like this whose values can be displayed on the template file. So say we want to display a username. We could do request and then let's access our um, dynamic route, which is username, because remember this will be a tagged onto request.params.username and let's access that and then pass it to this pug profile. So this code right here passes the request parameter, which is whatever takes the place of username, which is here is wit code. And what it does is allow us then to pass it to our pug, um, our pug template. And we can then access it in our template. So inside here, like this, we could do h1 equals username. So now if our, what this means is if the data that we pass to this profile has the key username, it will show up in our profile. So now let's refresh this. And now we get wit code. Let's go to Bill. We get Bill. Let's go to Mike and so on. And now if we wanted, let's also display this as like a string to show it's their profile. So if we want to do that with pug, what we can do is we do this hashtag here, the name of the variable, which is username, apostrophe s, profile. So now let's go back in and see what it looks like here. Now it'll be Mike's profile. So what this essentially is here is it's an interpolated string. An interpolated string is basically a little literal string that contains variables. So we can display our username variable inside a string in our pug template. But that's really all I wanted to show you about templates. We can, of course, do as many things as we want to. We could, let's say, we also want to pass in just 
say fave cheese. And then if we go in here, we, we want to pass another parameter that would be cheese. All we have to do is just make the key cheese and let's do, um, let's do cheddar. I just think about that for a bit. And let's go in here and let's just type in this. What are we missing here? Oh, so we didn't call it, we called it fave cheese, I believe. So now if we reload this again, we get cheddar. So we can pass whatever we want to our profile, our template, and that's what makes it dynamic. So this is has a, basically a skeleton that's the same amongst every user, but the content of it is different, which is what we're changing with this render function. But so there we have it. That's all I really wanted to show you about templates. Um, that's enough knowledge, I'd say, to get going with those. But don't worry, we'll be um, learning more about Pug as we continue this series. This article really just serves as an introduction. And so in the next video, we're going to be start talking about serving up um, static content. So we've been doing dynamic here, but we're going to now talk about serving static files. But so besides that, I want to thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing today. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I guess I'll see you in the next one. So have a good one.